Hey, person watching this, I hope you're having a beautiful, lovely day, or as lovely as it can be in November. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that because this video is about a mobile game, I'm unable to reliably gather my own footage, unfortunately. There's a number of reasons why, but the main one is just that it's on my phone and it's tougher than a console-based game to get quality video from. Therefore, my footage has been guided from the following sources. There they are. They are on the screen and I am giving them the proper credit that they deserve. Thank you for your time and enjoy the video. So earlier this year, I did a long form review retrospective on the Pikmin Trilogy, a series of games that I really love due to their focus on a believable nature theme and addictive efficiency based real time strategy gameplay. Those games mean so much to me, and obviously I'm beyond excited that a venture to further the Pikmin franchise now exists on smartphones of all places. Pikmin Bloom released on app stores a couple weeks ago, and I've been spending plenty of time with the game, so I wanted to do a formal review for it. As this is a mobile game, it's very possible lots of updates and new content could be arriving at unidentifiable points in the future, so I'm not comfortable calling this a long form review because to me, Despite my naming scheme revolving around video length, calling a video script that makes it feel like I need to, to make it definitive. By the time this could be definitive, I guarantee you nobody will have a flip to give about this game. So I'm gonna focus on this game at launch. I'm assuming that's okay with you, right? Okay, cool beans. Well, then I guess let's dive into this Pikmin Bloom short-ish form review. <laughs> so over the last five years or so, Nintendo has been making a push to try and join the mobile market using unique takes on some of their more iconic IPs. The first and inarguably most successful of these was Pokemon Go. Everybody was on that thing when it came out, despite a lack of abundant features. It was kind of a cool phenomenon. Everybody was out there catching Pokemon. They were getting hit by cars, they were, they were uh, buying Starbucks tie-in frappuccinos. It was a crazy time to be alive in 2016. I missed out on the whole frenzy. I'm not really a huge Pokemon fan regardless, but like, you know, I would have played this. The only thing holding me back was the fact that I only had a flip phone at the time. You can thank my parents for that one. Although some of the following Nintendo mobile releases definitely were hits in terms of downloads, Super Mario Run, Mario Kart Tour, and Animal Crossing Pocket Camp are all kind of reviled, I feel like. Like, of course everybody's gonna get Mario Kart and Animal Crossing on their phones. It's freaking Mario Kart and Animal Crossing, not on a $300 Nintendo box. Now it's on a $900 Apple box. But once people dove in, the shady practices of gacha and microtransactions reared their sickly little heads. It feels just as out of place to talk about now as it did when these games first released. Most phone games do have these things in them, but in a Nintendo release, it just felt so surreal at the time. On top of all that, I found the base gameplay of all these titles to be unenjoyable ripoffs of their console equivalents. Any further Nintendo apps probably won't catch my eye, I'll, I'll just skip them. However, to me, Pokemon Go is still the most unique out of all these games for the simple reason that it's built around AR. All the other apps were more self-contained games that were supposed to be a simplified version of the console games formulas like a Mario Auto Runner, a Mario Kart game you control with your finger, and spending money on furniture. Pokemon Go got players to go to locations in search of in-game rewards, and I think that unique take on the gotta catch them all formula really makes the game more worth it than its more watered down contemporaries. And sure enough, Niantic, the company behind Pokemon Go, got to put a similar spin on the Pikmin series. Needless to say, I was super excited for it to come out. I remember when the news dropped of a Pikmin app's existence and I, I actually signed up to be part of the beta. But did they ask me to be part of the beta? No. Whatever. The game's out now and I've been on that grind. As of writing this script, I'm at about level 24 or so, and as of editing the video, I'm probably even further than that. So what's the freaking deal with the gameplay, yo? <laughs> 
Pikmin Bloom is a walking companion app. It doesn't emphasize AR as much as Pokemon Go, but it uses elements of it in order to encourage you to go on walks. This is already a perfect sell to me because of how I go about exercising. I am a walking freak. I always make sure to go on at least one 30 minute little jaunt every day. So the idea of having little Pikmin minions to follow me around on my walks like they do in their own series is an adorable idea. Like with most Nintendo games, you can make a valid argument that walking is the main mechanic of Pikmin Bloom and therefore everything is built around it. The main two supporting pillars there are growing the Pikmin and playing planting flowers. In your planter pack, you have these little slots that you can put seedlings in. There are two permanent ones, and then sometimes when you level up, you get a couple that you can use to grow a single seed before it disappears. All the major Pikmin types are represented in this game. Red, yellow, blue, purple, white, winged, and rock. And they're unlocked in that order. The main trio takes 1,000 steps each to grow, purple and white take 3,000 steps, and winged and rock take 5,000. You unlock all of these different types at various level caps, so these increases in steps kind of work in tandem with the game to give a sense of escalating effort per level. Anyways, steps are how you grow individual Pikmin, and when you've walked enough, you can pluck them and have them in reserve. You can even name them in this game, finally! I have different themes for all my colors. Reds get generic white dude names, yellows are named after yellow foods, blues are named after characters I really like, purples are named after synonyms for being chubby little babies, white Pikmin are named after cryptids, Bruh. winged Pikmin are named after drugs, not not because I do drugs, I, I don't, but because they're like high, so it's like a joke. And rock Pikmin are memes that I think are stupid, so really the possibilities are never ending there. Leveling up itself requires certain objectives like planting enough seeds or getting enough petals, as well as reaching a certain number of steps. But growing the Pikmin gives you these little motivating milestones between reaching each level's larger requirements. I think this part of the gameplay loop works perfectly. Planting the flowers is something I find myself feeling a bit mixed on. It's also a more complicated feature, so let's get into the thick of it. Nectar is a Pikmin staple. It's what you use to mature your Pikmin from the slower, weaker leaf variant into the faster, stronger, full-fledged flower. In this game, you can send your Pikmin on expeditions to go get fruits from places you visited, and once they go out and get the fruit, you can turn it into nectar, which you can then feed to the Pikmin to grow their head plants, just like in the main series. However, once they have flowers, you can actually pluck the petals in this game, which is what you use to plant flowers around the world. All your different colors of petals, and there are surprisingly a lot of them, can be seen in this little menu. When you look at them, they'll tell you how how many petals you've collected and how much real world time that will correlate to. Now I think the idea is that you pick your color and you use that as a general guide for how long you can go on a walk for. If that's the case, I don't think it's that effective. You get so much nectar and so many petals that the only reason to pick flower planting for walking is to get rid of your excess petals. Other end game motivations for planting these things are seeing your friend's flowers on the map as well, which is cute. You can also plant flowers around landmarks to turn them into huge flowers and get some rewards. What sorts of rewards? Well, I'm glad you asked. You get fruit. Yeah, walking and planting flowers doesn't seem to be the best thought out feature, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Really, growing the Pikmin and sending the Pikmin out on little expeditions are the best parts of the game. The expeditions are literally just a menu and there's not a whole lot interactive to do, but it's just a cute way to interact with the app while you're not going out and walking. These expeditions are definitely the closest this game gets to matching the micromanagement heavy gameplay of the console games, and even though it's technically canonically wrong because the purple Pikmin are only worth 5 Pikmin instead of 10, it's cute. You can even get postcards from different locations the Pikmin visit, which you can then send to your friends. Me and my friends have been doing that constantly. It rules. Pretty much everything else, like planting the flowers and the fairly useless mushroom challenges that I really don't even want to bother talking about, are pretty superfluous. At launch, and this video should only be coming out a few weeks or a month after that point, there's a severe lack of content to keep people consistently engaging with this app, I find. Although Pokemon Go has had a substantial substantial decrease in consistent users, it has at least added a ton of content like whole post-gen 1 groups of Pokemon, but the thing about Pikmin is, 
What can they add? Well, actually, if it were all up to me, I would change a couple of in-place features. First of all, make growing the big flowers reward the player with costumes. That's a way better reward than fruit. I get enough fruit in my day-to-day -day life, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Oh, I'm actually proud of that one. That, was, that sucks. Also, get rid of the mushrooms. They're stupid. What if instead, the challenges are various creatures from the games? So in a similar way to Pokemon Go, creatures like Bulborbs and Wallywogs can be found around your area. You could have a whole little Piclopedia to fill out. That would be a fantastic motivator to come back to this app and continue growing Pikmin for the bigger expeditions and crazier creatures. You could even have your steps motivate the Pikmin in battle or something stupid so you could be more involved with these bigger expeditions. I mean, that's what I would do. Okay, so let's take a beat and talk about monetization. As I said earlier, monetization in most Southern Nintendo apps has been pretty awful and very overtly predatory. Super Mario Run users can testify that playing past the first world requires a credit card swipe, Animal Crossing has tons of in-app purchases for most items, and Mario Kart has gotcha mechanics. Ew, I hate that. Fortunately, Pikmin Bloom, at least at launch, only has in-app purchases for things that don't really matter. If you really want some more nectar or a seed growing thing or whatever, you can buy them. And that doesn't bother me, I don't really care. What is annoying about it is how if you really want to use the shop, you're going to have a hard time doing so using anything but your credit card. The only currency in the game is these flower coins. The main way that you earn them is by planting flowers, which would seem to give doing that a more practical use. However, the rate at which you earn coins is wickedly pitiful. It feels like this is the dev's surefire way to get you to spend real money on Pikmin Bloom. That is pretty annoying. At the very least though, I can say that no substantial content in the game has been locked behind monetization yet. Now if they do change that, I'm gonna be pissed and I'm gonna make like 55 rant videos and I'm gonna put Mario Odyssey gameplay behind them while I talk about how heinous Nintendo is. And then I'm gonna put footage of me getting onto the Nintendo eShop and spending $60 on every single video game they've ever made. So don't change the money system in Pikmin, Nintendo, or I swear I'll pay. This type of monetization does tell us a few positive things though. It shows that Nintendo has learned its lesson about what people will complain about at least, and it shows that they really wanted this to be as pleasant of a walking companion as possible with as few annoying hitches as possible. This makes me think of Pikmin Bloom as being a little bit more of an experimental passion project to the company. That's 100% in line with Pikmin as a franchise, so in a way it's kind of cute that this phone game does indeed fit in with the rest of the family in that way. <laughs> The graphics in this game are pretty minimalist. It is a phone game, so it's not like it runs well on anything that's not a current gen iPhone, but still, the graphics aren't unappealing, but they're definitely minimalist to a somewhat underwhelming degree. The Pikmin are definitely the thing you'll be seeing the most, and they look like slightly less darkened versions of their Pikmin 1 representations to me. They have this weird texturing that I don't gel with personally. That's all I have to say about the graphics. I also don't have a lot to say about the music because it also takes a very minimalist approach. It's pleasant, but it's all pretty much just ambient versions of the main Pikmin theme, something you could argue is already more than a bit overused in the main games. That being said, one song I can for sure recommend is a pompous VGM connoisseur, is the Planting Flowers song. The gameplay mode may be kind of useless, but the track that accompanies it is a pretty perfect piece of musical score. Its tempo is at a decent walking pace, the instrumentation is nice and pleasant, and it's got some decently emotional hooks.
as an app made to encourage you to walk and gathering little Pikmin buddies to join you, this game is a mixed bag, but I'd say it's still a success. Growing the Pikmin using your steps and micromanaging them via expeditions is fun and satisfying. Even the flower planting, which is pretty shallow and ultimately not that rewarding, is still a cute idea that does try to encourage you to get out and move. I think more than anything, it's a missed opportunity that they didn't launch this game during the summertime. With how brutal winter is in most places in the world, that's gonna kill excitement and users for this app more quickly than Nintendo probably wants. But I can tell you that I'll be a dedicated casual user of this app for as long as I can be, especially once springtime hits. If you like going outside and moving, or you want to do it more but need some motivation, I would actually recommend giving this a try. Hopefully they do add some more content to the game, like a Piclopedia mission or whatever else, but as is, it's a cute, helpful idea for a phone game. Give it a go. I hope this was fun to watch. I know it's more than a bit of a deviation from what I normally upload, but I guess after my retrospective earlier this year, I just wanted to tie things up with a semi-topical video just to see how it would come out. I think it came out okay. If you enjoyed it, subscribe and then follow me on Twitter and all that. You could also support me upon the Patreon if you want. If you want, no pressure. I will be putting a poll up there for my next video, so be sure to check it out. Alright, that's it. Bye forever. Cue outro card.